Hello friends! We continue the Create Fighting Game from Scratch tutorial series. For today's lesson we will cover adding hit attacks and combos to our player character. I provide 6 attack animations for you to use them during this lesson. You are free to use them for educational purpose with this tutorial as I have migrated them for you from my paid project named True Fighting Game Engine. I include these animations into a sample project, which already implements all the functionality that we have covered in the previous tutorials, including character blueprint, grappling attacks, camera movements, control with two gamepads, etc. But, of course, you can use any other animations of your choice while you follow this tutorial. To get the sample project that I mentioned, just leave a comment below this video specifying the way for me to contact you, preferably email, but it can also be Facebook or something other. And I will get back to you during up to 72 hours since you posted your comment, <laughs> but I will do my best to make it quicker and I will send you the link to the project. So, in the today's lesson we are going to learn how to add the add text and combos. You know, when we continue pressing this same key and the fighter character fires a combination of attacks. In the next lessons we will apply damage and add hit reactions for the enemy. And then I think we will proceed to dodging and blocking movements. And now, before we start, uh, let me make a little product placement. While in this series we are creating a fighting game completely from scratch, there is a more professional way. It would actually take hundreds and thousands of working hours to create and test a production-ready fighting game like Mortal Kombat or Tekken and it would cost a company hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, if it is your actual goal, and if this is why you started watching this video, I recommend you to still follow this tutorial series to get the in-depth understanding of the principles. But, as the solution for your game, I would recommend using my true fighting game engine for Unreal Engine, which is available on Epic Store. It already implements features you may need in a AAA fighting game. You can easily manage multiple characters, attacks, combos and hit reactions through its blueprint system. It also provides a multiplayer support for local and network multiplayer fighting games. I am constantly working on improvements, so if you have an idea of your own fighting game, it is the best choice for you. You can find the link to the True Fighting Game Engine in the description below this video. And now let's start with the tutorial. Alright, so let's begin with the implementation. Let's open our content drawer and navigate to Content, Third Person, Input. And as you remember, we have already implemented one input action named Attack, but that was for our grappling attacks. So, just for clarity, let's rename it to Grappling Attacks. So, we right click and rename. And we just type underscore Grappling underscore attack. Alright. And now let's implement one more input action. And now we just will name it Hit Attack. So, we right click, we select Input. Input action and as a name we type IA underscore. Let's name it hit underscore. You know, let's just name it IA attack. And uh, this means we, it will be a hit attack. Let's open it. And there's an action description. Let's type. Uh, Execute hit attack. So we have one input action for a grappling attack, for all grappling attacks, and one input action for hit attacks. Right. So let's add this input action to all, all the input mapping contexts. 
So let's first open this context. It is for player one and for two gamepads. And let's add a mapping here and select I, I attack. Let's uh, set the keyboard key here as U and add one more key and it will be a gamepad. And let's for now set for this section uh, gamepad, deep pad, up button. We save. And for the second player, two, you remember two gamepads, player two. We added it as well. We add a mapping. And we select I attack. And for the player two, we just select a gamepad. Depart up button, all right. And next, same for the 2D mode, player one. And we actually set the same mappings here. So I, I attack, keyboard, U button, and gamepad, depart up button. All right, and two game parts player two to the game, and we add I A attack, and we add a game pod, D pod up, save. Yeah, so that's simple. And for the default keyboard game pod action mapping, when when we control only our left character with the keyboard and with the game pod, I A attack. And we do the same, we select, we click this little keyboard icon and we select the UK. And we add one more key, gamepad, D-pad up, save, All right? And the last one for 2D mode, I, I attack. And the same, we add a U key on our keyboard and gamepad, D-pad up, all right? And we click save, yes. It was just that simple. Great. And now we are ready to work with our blueprint, third person. So in our content driver, we go content, third person, blueprints. And we open up our BP, factor character blueprint. And as you remember, we already have implemented some logic for grappling attacks. We have renamed the input action for grappling attack. And just for clarity, let's rename this custom event execute attack to execute grappling attack. Do not get confused with, our, with the attacks we are going to add now. Let's name them hit attacks, or I don't know. And you know what? Let's select all of this, all the logic. Input action, execute grappling attack and execute attack victim custom events. And then we right click and select co collapse nodes. And let's name this collapse graph grappling attack logic. Grappling attacks logic. Let's move it. It up. Now let's start with our input action. Let's uh, first cre create a custom event. We right click on empty space on the graph. We type custom event. We select add custom event and let's name it just attack. And this will be a custom event for our hit attacks. Great. Now let's right click and start typing IA. And let's select our IA attack in protection. And when it's triggered, we just call our custom event just to distribute the logic. It is for clarity, it is a good, good practice. Now let's collapse these nodes to a separate collapsing graph as well. Let's select them, collapse nodes, and let's name it it. Text logic. Let's open it. Let's move it a little bit up. Align it. Let's open it up. 
and we are going to work this subgraph now. Let's add a couple of variables to our blueprint. For now, let's add a variable. These will be Boolean variables. So we add the first variable and let's name it and attack if the character is cur currently capable to perform attack. And the second Boolean variable and we name it attacking. And the third Boolean and we name it keep attack. We will need this if we perform a combo. And now from the attack execution pin, we drag a connection and we create a branch. And the condition is if we can attack, it can attack. And if we can attack, we perform another branch. Let's add one more. And the condition will be if we are currently attacking. So we get this variable. And if we do, it means that we have pressed the attack key while we are already performing attack. So we keep, uh, we should set the keep attack to be true to know that we are going to perform a combo. You know, we perform the first attack and we press the same key again. So it means, so it means that after the current attack is finished, we will have to perform the next attack from the combo. So keep attack and we set it to be true. But if we are not currently attacking, it means that we have pressed the key for the first time and we fired the event for the first time. So we have just started attacking. So let's set it this value to be true. And for now, as we have set just one key for the attack, uh, let's um, perform, let's uh, imagine that we will have only two combos and let's perform them in a random order. When we first start attacking, a random combo will be selected. But let's add one more variable and let's name it combo number and its type is going to be integer all right and let's set it to a random one or two so we drag a connection and we set the combo number and we are going to set it to a random number between one and two so we drag a connection from the input node and start typing random integer in range all right and it will be in the range between 1 and 2. And now let's say we are going to have up to four attack types in a combo. Maybe this can be any number, but we need to somehow count them. So let's set one more variable, name it attack counter, and it is going to be integer as well. And we are going to switch by this value. We drag a connection from our execution pin and we start typing switch on int and this value. And as an input, we are going to provide our attack counter. Let's add four execution pins. This can be any, I don't know. Let's actually remove one of them. Let's have three attacks in a combo for now. And let's remove the execution pin from this switch. You will only need these three execution pins to form different parts of our combo. Great. And now let's add one more custom, custom event. And let's name it attack combo. And do you remember when we were already attacking, we have saved the keep attack state from the attack combo execution pin, draw a connection, and then we create a branch. And as a condition, is going we are going to provide the keep, keep attack. Right. And if, if it is true, 
then we reset the value keep attack to be false. When we press the attack um, key for the next one, it will save the state uh, once again and uh, we'll go, go back to this custom event one more time. So for now, we keep it, we save the keep attack to false and go to execution or our attack in the with the corresponding attack counter value, its position, its number inside the combo. All right. And when our combo ends, for this, let's set one more custom event. Let's name it combo end. And in this case, we set the attacking variable to false. And when our combo combo ends, let's set the attacking state to be false and let's set our attack counter to be zero great just great and now what we see here uh, we have an attack counter and we have a number of a, of an attack in a combo if we press the attack k several times so basically, if you have an attack number and the number of, um, of an attack in that combo, uh, we just need to find the corresponding montage and play it. So for doing this, for finding the uh, corresponding montage, let's first create a new function and name it find attack montage, right? And now we are going to create a structure which will contain a name of a specific montage. I mean, let's say it will be some conventional name which includes the number of combo and the number and then the number of attack in a combo. And we are going to pass it as a string. And the montage itself, which is corresponding to that combo number in a specific attack. So we open our content drawer, right click the third person, and we create a new folder and name it Structs. Structures, all right? We go to that folder, right click on empty space, and we select Blueprint Structure and name this structure Attack Montage Struct. Attack Montage Struct, all right? save it and we open the struct and let's change this variable start to string and let's name it name the variable sort string and we save right now we are ready to proceed to proceed with our find attack montage function we go back to the blueprint to the parallel blueprint and we have our final attack montage function open. And let's now add one more variable and name it attack montages. And as its type, we specify and we go to the, to the details of this variable and it is going to be a map. So animation montages will be the keys for this map. And our newly created structure is going to be the values. So if we click on the type of the values in the map, and then we set the type to our struct that we have just created. You remember it is a tag on touches struct. So we compile and we save. And now let me remind one more time: we have a random integer. It could actually, it can actually be not random. Uh, we just set it as random for now. And another integer we specifies the combo attack number in that attack set. All right. So we need the two input values for our function find attack montage. So in the details tab, in the inputs, we click this little plus icon, and let's name the first parameter combo. And the type is going to be integer. It will be the number of the combo. We add one more input parameter. And let's name it number. And it is going to be integer as well. And now we get our attack montages map. Just, just to see uh, when we select this variable, 
we could we could actually add the default values and you see here is this structure we have not created the montages for our hit attacks yet but we can actually select here some attack montage and give it a name to sort when we will have this map populated we will be able to find a, a montage corresponding to a current attack let's drag a connection from this variable attack montages and get the keys remember the keys are montages and the values values is a, is our structure containing the source string and let's now loop through all the keys <coughs> we drag a connection from the keys output node and we select that for each loop as the keys are we get we get the keys from the map and it is going to be an array of our structures <laughs> and let's get our attack montages once again and we are going to find in this map the structure containing the name which corresponds to current montage when we pass through the loop and we get the structure and the output and the output node is going is going to be the structure our attack montage structure which is corresponding to current animation montage with the current attack we drag a connection and we are going to break the montage struct and we have the only member in this struct and now we need to, to compare that sort string with our conventional name of the current montage so let's drag a connection and search for three equal uh, signs which means the function named equal exactly string so let's drag a connection from the from the input string parameter type append and let's say our string uh, which specifies a current montage is going to be a concatenation of two strings uh, same combo one number two or it can can be combo two number three because as you remember one more time in our imagination we keep two possible combos or we could, we could actually have three four combos and uh, we currently have three attacks in each of the combos so the combo two means the second combo and the number three means the second value in that zero based counter of the attacks and we have the combo number and the attack number as our input parameters so we just drag a connection from each of the input node input parameters and append one more time and and we append a string named combo with our combo number and the string with the value number with our number parameter so you understand yeah and when we have the exact string con constructed we are going to have a string which by our convention will identify a specific attack animation montage and if the string is equal to that map value let's create a branch a drag a connection from the loop body execution pin to that branch and let's now check if this is equal to check this we create a branch and drag a connection from the execution pin of the loop body and if it's true then we have got the correct montage great and now all we are going to do we are going to return the montage from the function so let's add an output well here in the details near the outputs we hit the plus and as the animation type we select the anim montage and let's name the parameter the montage right so from the branch through exec execution pin we drag a connection and start typing return and we add 
a return node and as the return value we provide our current array element which corresponds to our current salt string great and now let's get back to our heated text logic tab subgraph and here we switch on int and we are going to call this function for each of our possible combos inside an attack well we were intending to have two different combos but now for just for testing let's uh, get a random integer in a range from one to one so just one combo later we can create as many combos as we want so here after the switch we drag a connection from our first attack execution pin and we do once because if we hold the button it can execute several times and we add a delay and we set the delay to 0 0.1 and we finally call the function find attack montage and for the first attack in a combo the values we provide to the function are going to be the combo number for the combo number and one as this is the first attack in a combo and now we are ready to play the montage so we draw the connection from the execution pin play montage and as a mesh as a skeletal mesh we provide our the mesh the skeletal mesh of our character as the montage to play we provide the output of our function and we change nothing else and after that we set the attack counter to the next value this value is going to be and this value is going to be two and after we have completed we can reset our do once macros let's do something like this just double click and align the connection just for, just to keep it clean right and let's move all of this a little bit up and let's copy it and paste one, two more times because we have two more possible attacks in a combo and we connect the execution pins and we connect our combo number to the inputs of the final attack function calls and we change the numbers one attack montage number and we set the number to be two and here we set the number to be three and we set the attack counters so so the first when we perform the first attack the next attack will be two that's right well the second attack the next attack is going to be three and when we perform the last attack let's reset the counter to zero great and now it's time to work with our animations as we want to add them of course as you may remember at the beginning of the lesson i have said that i provide you with animations they are ready to use and this and these animations are from the true fg package feel free to use them for the educational purposes but if you want if you need more animations uh, or you you would like to use different ones you may you can buy any of the numerous asset packs which are available on the epic store and finally you can just buy the true fighting game engine <laughs> as it contains a lot of animations and uh, you know great so let's open our content drawer and then we get to content at tech root motion folder which contains the animations 
that I mentioned. Let's select them all with uh, with our mouse click holding shift button. And first, I'll just show you if you use animations from other source, we should make sure that the root motion is enabled for all of them. So we select all of the animations, uh, we right click and inside the pop up menu, we select the asset actions and then we choose edit selection in property matrix. And you, as you may see, the enable root motion is already selected for all of the animations that I provide. But if you use animations from other sources, you should just enable the root motion for all of your animation and then uh, go to file and uh, save all of them. And now it's time to create animation montages. Let's right click on the attack root motion folder, select the new folder and name it montages, right? And now we select all the animations once again, we right click and we select the create, create any montage, right? And we select all the montages we have just created and, and we move them to the movies folder. Let's like move here just to have the things clear. Right now, it's time to start working with our animation blueprint. So, in our content drawer, let's expand our character folder, go to mannequins, animations, and we see here two animation blueprints. Actually, our queen character is using the, the ABP queen animation blueprint but it is a child of the abp many so if you want to edit something we edit the abp many animation blueprint but the abp queen will take those changes as a child of the main animation blueprint all right well actually the good practice would be to copy both of these animation blueprints to our third person. Yeah, actually, let's do this. Select both of them. Drag to our third person blueprints and select the copy here. And let's rename it. Let's rename the ABP many to ABP many underscore fight. And let's Rename the ABP Queen as well to ABP Queen underscore fight. Now let's open the animation blueprint ABP Queen. Click on the class settings and at the right in the details tab, instead of the parent class ABP many, let's select the ABP many fight. And we reparent and we compile and save. And now let's open up our BP Fighter character, our character blueprint. Go to the viewport, not necessary actually, but uh, and let's select the root component BP Fighter character. And at the right in the details tab, under the animation section, you see we have the animation mode, anim class, ABP Queen. Let's change it to ABP. We fight that we have just created. And now we, we are not going to touch the def default animation blueprints, but we are going to work with our newly created animation blueprints, which will be the default blueprints for our fighting game. Because in the future we may want to remove the default data which comes with the uh, by default third person game and use our newly created folder and assets. Now let's open the ABP many fight as it is a parent blueprint and first of all let's zoom up and here in this very top section let's remove this cast to character node and cast it to our third person character. So you remember our blue character blueprint is named BP Fighter character, 
And it is the name of the class. So we cast to Piper BP fighter character. Right? And here where we set our character, let's replace all the references of just a character to our fighter character, all right? So we select the node set character and at the right and the details under the variable type option, let's start typing file and select the BP fighter character. And the editor prompts us to replace all the references and instances and we do so, we agree, and we click the change variable type, wait until it completes, and yes, that's it. And now we just connect the execution pins and we provide our BP fighter character as input variable for our set. We compile and we save. Ah, and we, of course, we connect these two execution pins as well. Right, now let's save all and let's go back to our bp fighter character to our character blueprint and it's time to add our first attack montage so at the left under the variable section we select the attack montages and at the right we are going to set the default values so let's set up the first one so we Click this little plus icon and as the montage, let's select the first one, left foot high, and let's expand. And the source string is going to, it, to, to be, do you remember our naming conven convention? Let's open it. Combo and number, and then number and number. So go back and we name, we select the attack montages. We have added a montage already and as the sort string and we should give it a name combo one number one right we compile but there's one nuance you see our can attack variable is boolean and if you remember we perform a check if it's true so to be able to run our first attack, let's select the can attack variable and set it to be true as the default value and compile and save. And let's try to run the game. Aha! Uh -huh. It does something. But first of all, what we can see why this awkward moment? Because we need to do something in our animation blueprint. You know it is using a control rig. I will show it to you right now. Let's open our content drawer, go to third person blueprint, open up the ABP many blueprints and open the anim graph. And you see this control rig which controls the foot uh, tracing, you know, if your map is not applying, we have to control where our, is our character is uh, placing its uh, its feet. So we could remove it at all, but it is a bad practice. So here we just double click the control rig node and let's edit it. You see this sequence node. And it is outdated, marked as outdated. So we right click and we select upgrade nodes. And let's add one more execution pin. And, and then we hold the control key on our keyboard. And we just replace all the pins outputs in new locations to free up our first execution pin. And we drag a connection from this. First execution pin, and we type set transform, and we select the set transform, and we expand the item value, and as the name of the bone, we search for ik foot l, 
Yeah. And as the value, as the input value, we are going to provide the actual transform of our foot. So we drive a connection and we type get transform. And we get the transform for this bone and which bone it is, it is going to be foot L. So we get that transform for the left foot and pass it to this control rig logic. And we do the same. Let's select both nodes and press control D on our keyboard. And we paste and, and we connect the output and input execution pins. But we should change this to be the right foot. So in here in the get transform, let's instead of the foot L, type foot R. And here in the set transform, instead of the IK foot L, we are typing IK foot R. All right. And it seems to be basically it. Let's check it out now. Let's run the game. And, and yeah, now our montage works. And what are we going to do now? Let's implement the logic for our combo system. Let's go back to our montages folder and open up our first montage. Let's set it to pause and let's choose a moment on our timeline where the attack is, is going to be ready to begin the next attack in combo. And somewhere here, we right click on our notify struct, we select add notify, and we choose the new notify option, and we type attack combo next as its name, right? And now let's right click once again, and new, we select the new notify again, and as its name, we provide snap. Type it, name it combo and all right. And let's drag it to the very end of our montage because, as you may remember, we actually have. Let's open our character blueprint and we have our hit attacks logic and we have custom events there named attack combo and combo and. So we can call them somehow, and we are going to do to do this with the help of our montage notifies. Let me just edit edit to our animation montage, and we are we will be going to add them to all of the montages as well. But for now, let's just do it for the first one. And we go to the third person blueprints folder and we open up our ABP many fight animation blueprint. And let's open up our event graph. Now let's right click, start typing next uh, attack, and we select the our animation notify attack combo next. Let's also add to our graph. Our notify combo and select our anim notify combo and let's get our character. If you don't know, we have it as a reference in our variables for the animation blueprint. And this is our player character, which is currently using this instance of the animation blueprint. And from our character, we drag a connection and we fire up our custom event at the Combo. And we drag a connection from our anim notify attack combo next to this. And we are going to correspondingly fire the combo end event. So we drag a connection from our character variable. We fire up the combo end our combo combo end custom event. And we connect the execution pin of the anim notify our combo and node we compile and we save but do you remember we did not actually yet add all the montages to our bp fighter character so 
Let's open up our character blueprint and select the attack montages variable and add one more montage. And let's let it be left hand uppercut. Yeah? And as the sword string, we type combo one, number two. And as I remember, we do actually have up to three attacks in a combo and we have two combos. Yeah? So let's add the third attack. You remember we currently actually fire only one, one combo for testing purposes. So let's finish up the first combo. And I want it to be something right foot at some right foot attack. Let's let it be this one right foot one kick. And as the sword string. We are going to type combo one, number three. Eh? Right. And let's now edit this random integer in range. We leave the min minimum as one and we set the ma maximum as two. We compile and save. And let's add other another combo, the second one, which will be going to be named like combo two number one like combo two number one number two number three let's do this really quickly and as the first attack in a combo let's select this middle kick and we give it a name combo two number one and we add one more montage and let it be all right, we have added an uppercut in the previous combo, so let's now add our hook, right hand hook. Let's add third attack in this second combo. There should be one more right foot montage. Yes, this right foot round forward, like this rounded round kicks. All right. Oh, and I have forgot to set the names for these last two combos. So I type combo two, um, two for this one, and I type combo two, number three for this one. So we have all added two combos to our character blueprint. And each of them is containing three attacks. We compile and we save everything, but we need to finish up with our montages. Do you remember by adding the notifies attack combo next and combo end? So, so we select all the montages with our control key being, being hold. We right click and we select edit. To edit all of them and let's add our notifies so here go something here somewhere somewhere here we are going to fire our attack combo next and we add a combo net and you see I now just select this anim notifies from a list because we already do have this notifies and it is pretty simple we save and compile and now for this montage we scroll our on our timeline somewhere here and we fire up our notify attack combo next and we add the notify named combo end and drag it to the end and we close okay here's here is our kick montage go somewhere here and we add the notify, attack combo next, and we add one more notify, combo end, and we drag it to the end. We save, not necessary, we can save everything later. Right, and in this montage, we add notify somewhere here, this point, attack combo next. The notify named combo end to the end and we close and for this middle kick montage ah 
is somewhere here. I'm going to add the notify, take combo next, and one more combo and, and drag it. And we close and we save everything. Okay, let's start the game and let's run now. Well, and you know something is wrong. I think I know what exactly because I always swear to myself to preserve preserve this zero based logic. But do you remember I have set this attack counter to two to three? Yeah, but we actually we are actually switching on int. Well, let's make this graph more clear. I remind you, this is our VP fighter character blueprint. Hit the text logic subgraph. Well, let's actually this combo number break all pin links. This is just for clarity. It's not linked to our trouble. Let's just uh, read the combo number and get row number for each of them. Just to make it clear, combo number, all right, and here as well, combo number. And you might have probably noticed that we switch on it, starting from zero and ending with two. But when I set the attack counter variable, I set it to two, in the first case, to three. In the second case, n to zero at the end. All right, let's just set the counter for the first combo number at a counter. We set the next value to one, which is actually the second, keep in mind, mind our zero based integer. And we set the second to two and the third back to zero. All right, ah. let's test it out now uh-huh and it seems now it does work by the way well let's speed up our animations they are so slow i'm going to set the red scale for this we just open them up and we increase the red scale because i may fall asleep while they are being performed i open all of them up and just increase the rate of each of the animation and I save them mm -hmm. all right all right and let's start the game now and yeah and it seems like now it does work yeah all right of course we should also apply the match we should create a react reaction to hit uh, but you know after we speed up our animations let's go to our animation montages and edit them as well because do you remember we have set our attack combo next notify on the specific keyframes so let's now adjust it in accordance with the new so let's just manually set this attack combo next then in appropriate positions according to the new animation rate and we save all and let's check it out now yeah and it seems to work fine yeah. and that's it for today see you next time have a nice day goodbye